When we work with Entity Framework or we sometimes get exceptions. Tough life, I know, but we have to deal with it. So while we deal with it, let's see if we can turn code like this into code like this. And you might also be in for one surprise if you stay tuned in. Hey there and welcome to the Code Recurs channel. Recently, I was working on a side project a regular setup with ASP.NET Core and Entity Framework Core. And as the project went on, we needed to implement some custom exception recovery based on some SQL exceptions that we might get back from the SQL server. And that's when I remembered exactly how cumbersome it is to do that, because usually Entity Framework Core wraps the SQL exception into its own exception. So if we want to get that SQL exception, we might need to do some digging. Therefore, I have recreated this scenario in a demo application. So let's take a look. So this is the very basic application that I have created for this. And I have here a regular controller with only one single action, which is a post in which we want to create a city. Now, the only thing is here that I have created here a DB context and obviously we also have the city entity itself, it just has an ID and the name because that's all the only things that are of interest to us. If I go to the DB context, what I have done here is that I have configured this name, this city name to be unique. And therefore it means that if I will try to add two entries with the same city name, then I would get an error. And obviously I have already added a city with a certain name, so it will be easier for us to recreate this error condition. So let's run the application, but first let's put a breakpoint here. In the meantime, I have Postman here and let's create a new city with the name Timishwara. And this city already exists in the database as I already told. And as expected, we did catch this exception, but if we take a deeper look into this exception object, we see that it also has an inner exception. And this inner exception is of type Microsoft Data SQL Client SQL exception. And if we expand it, we see that this is a totally dedicated exception with a dedicated error message and it also has this number 2601 which might be important and we'll talk about this just in a few minutes. So if we want to perform some custom exception recovery based on the SQL exception, it means that we will need to dig in and to find out exactly if the inner exception is an SQL exception and then further to get the number of that SQL exception. Now the number is very important because in SQL numbers are documented. These are error numbers that come from SQL and each number means something exactly. In our case, this number means that we have violated the unique constraint. As you know, I always like to also give some practical reference about the things that I'm explaining. So let me walk you through the exact scenario that we encountered while developing that specific application. So what we were doing is that we were generating some random eight character long strings that we were placing on an object in a database. Obviously, there is a small chance that the generated random strings would collide and we want to keep them unique. And that's why we have implemented this unique constraint on the database that we cannot store two strings that have the same value. So the idea of the exception recovery, because that's why we do exception recovery, we want to recover from it. In our case, it's very easy because since those are random strings and the chances that a collision would occur are pretty low, if we have a collision, so if we get this exception, what we would do is just simply try again, generate the new string and try to save it once again in the database. So that is the exact scenario that I encountered. Now let me show you how we could do this something similar in our demo application. So let's pretend that we want to implement some, some custom exception recovery here. Therefore, I will simply remove this return for now. And the first thing that we need to do is to do an if and to get actually the base exception type. And if the base exception type, which is the inner exception, so the exception that caused the entire thing to fail, and if this is an SQL exception, then I want to perform some logic. And as said, the key here to create custom exception recovery based on the different SQL exceptions that you might get, having the numbers of these exceptions is very important. So the next thing that we would need to do is to get the error code. So we cast the SQL exception to the inner exception and we just want to get the number from it. In our case, once we get the number, then we can implement our custom exception recovery in this case, we just return status code 500 and duplicate city name. This is the method. But for instance, to keep it brevity here, implement exception recovery. 
So this is the logic that you might need to implement or you might want to implement. Then if the exception is anything else, what we want to do is simply return the status code and with the exception message. So let's run this application again. And here we are back at Postman and let's do a request. And this time we see that we got the exception or the message that we have written inside that if. So if we take a look at this, it's exactly this line. So we managed to get this specific SQL exception that indicated a violation of the unique index constraint. I am for sure not the best developer in the world, but there is one thing that I always try to do, keep my code as clean as possible. And when I look at this code, well, it's quite the opposite of clean. First of all, we need to do a lot of digging into the inner exception and this ultimately results in nested code. Then this code doesn't express intent at all. It's just based on a magic number. And if other team members will take a look at this code maybe in a few weeks from now, they would for sure not exactly remember what this code actually does. So can we do better than that? Obviously we can, and this is also the point where you might find it a little bit surprising. I always said that I'm not the advocate of using libraries without any critical thinking. Because in my opinion, the moment that you add a library to your application, you introduce technical depth. But in this case, I would like to present you a very cool library that helps us to work with SQL exceptions when dealing with Entity Framework Core. And the library is called Entity Framework Core Exceptions. I don't say that we definitely should use this library, but it's worth at least considering it, given that we can simply transform all this ugly code into a single line of code just by using this simple library. First of all, we would need to install a NuGet package. So let me go to manage NuGet packages. And the name of the NuGet package is this Entity Framework Core Exceptions SQL Server. And as you can see, there are different packages for different other providers, but we'll come back to this just a little bit later. For now, let's just install that. Next, we need to go to our DB context and we also need to override the on configuring method. And this on configuring method, we need to use this use exception processor. And that will add the library's exception processor to Entity Framework Core to the DB context. And it will be able to kind of like tweak in or to work with the exceptions that we get so that it will transform them to something that's more meaningful to us. And now comes the more spectacular part. It means that right now, once we have this package, we can simply go and delete everything that we have here and replace it with just this very simple catch block in which we will just return the status code. The thing here is that what we get back from this library is this unique constraint exception. So we can do a check or a catch on this unique constraint exception. And once we know that we have this type of exception, then we can just simply return our custom logic or the things that we want to return in case that we have this very specific SQL exception. So let's run the application again and let's do another API call. And now we see that we get this response returned with the, with the help of a very cool library. And that's exactly that message that we placed here. So it means that we were able to successfully catch this unique constraint exception specifically. This Entity Framework Core Exceptions library is not complicated, but it's very powerful. And the main reason why I say this is because it allows us to express intent. We can just replace all the code that we had previously with just a single line of code. But more than this, we can use some very specific exceptions that also have names that express intent. On the screen right now, you can see a list of the different exceptions that we can catch or get or work with when we are using this library. But there's another thing. This library doesn't only work with SQL Server. In fact, there are different variants of this library that are specific for other SQL providers, like for instance, MySQL, MySQL Pomelo, SQLite, Oracle. So no matter what database provider you are using with Entity Framework Core, you can still use this library. And the icing on the cake here is that no matter what database provider you use, you get to work with the exact same exceptions that we have seen already. So theoretically, this would even mean that you can even switch your database provider and your custom exception handling or working with these exception types will still work exactly the same. So you wouldn't have to change that. So a big kudos from my side to Georgi Dalakishvili, the creator of this awesome library. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button on this video if you enjoyed it and if you are for the first time here, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you are always notified when there is something new happening here on this channel. And if you have any questions or you just want to get in touch with me, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and leave a comment. I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. 
This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.